This is Twit. Unless you were hiding under a rock, which is very possible, you might know the rock and be hiding underneath him. <laughs> uh, Microsoft held a major product event yesterday, and you were on set here with mm -hmm. Micah Sargent to cover it for Twitter. Bright Twit. eyed and bushy tailed. Yes, early in the morning. <laughs> uh, another bright and bushy tailed person was at the event, Mary Jo Foley, host of Windows Weekly, writer for All About Microsoft at ZDNet. Uh, you got the full skinny of all the announcements in the place. Welcome to the show, Mary Jo. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes, I'm very not bright eyed and bushy tailed right now. I'm really <laughs> tired, but <laughs> yeah, these last couple of days fun. have been a challenge, huh? <laughs> yeah, they have. <laughs> From one thing to another. So, um, so actually, you guys just finished recording this week's episode of Windows Weekly. Normally, you would re have recorded it yesterday, but because of the announcement, uh, you recorded it this morning. So, I should say right off the top, if uh, if folks you know, want to hear more than what you're going to tell us here, which is probably an abbreviated version of what you saw, they should definitely check that out. Twit.tv slash WW for Windows Weekly. What were your ex expectations leading into this event? Was like with Google events, I'm used to everything being 100% leaked before it ever happens. Did Microsoft do a better job of keeping a lid on most things? Um, up until pretty close to the event, they did an okay job, but then Ev leaks, you know, that oh, yeah. guy. He's <laughs> solid. <laughs> He's too good. He got all the pictures. Uh, we, you know, he, I should say we knew, we knew pretty well what kind of Surface devices were going to be announced for the near term. So we knew there was going to be an AMD Surface. We knew there was going to be a Qualcomm one. We knew there was going to be a refresh on Surface Pro. So we, we knew the categories, but we didn't actually have the photos until a couple days before the event and Ev leaks got them all. <laughs> so all that got out there. Um, we also were pretty sure we were going to see the long rumored thing that we've been calling Centaurus, you know, the book like device. Mm -hmm. uh, you, looks like the old courier that Microsoft almost launched years ago. So we knew that was coming too, uh, but we didn't, we had not seen it um, in, in person or in pictures. So that was somewhat of a reveal. But, you know, the big one was the Android phone. From Microsoft. <laughs> okay, so explain that a little bit. So is this big because people truly didn't see it coming or is it big because it's a revolutionary device? Like, I mean, you know, I do all about Android here on the Twit Network. Yeah. So obviously the, the minute I saw that headline, my ears perked mm -hmm. up. I'm like, okay, content. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, I think it's a really neat looking device. You know, we got a lot of foldables happening. Like what makes it such a big uh, device from the show, from the reveal? Well, um, so... Um, I'm trying to think when this was, May 2019 or so, Paul and I talked on Windows Weekly about the fact that we had both heard a rumor, a crazy rumor, that Microsoft might make an Android phone. We were both like, yeah, sure, right. <laughs> and um, so we, we kind of just dismissed it, you know. And then when they did their one more thing moment at the show, it was like the event was over and then they were like, oh, we got one more device. And they didn't say right away it was Android, right? They showed it, and it right. looked just like a scaled down version of the of the um, notebook kind of thing. And then all of a sudden, I, I was looking at the pictures, and I'm like, "Wait, it's running the Google Play Store. Wait a minute, this is Android." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, so they did do the Android device." So I think that fa the fact that Microsoft actually felt like they still should make a phone, and that it shouldn't be a Windows phone, but it should be an Android phone, was a pretty big deal. Did Microsoft make much of a, like much around the fact that it was running Android on stage? Like Samsung does a really good job <laughs> the last however many years of never once saying Android, even though everything yeah. is built on Android. They didn't say much yeah. of anything other than seeing a tweet <laughs> from, oh, okay. from Pinos. Is, I can never pronounce his yeah. name, but he tweeted it like right after the fact that, hey, thanks for working with this, Hiroshi. It was a pleasure. <laughs> you know? Oh, by the yeah. way, small <laughs> asterisk <laughs> running Android. I know. I know. Yeah. So I guess, again, it, the part that you have to think about is Microsoft has this partnership with Samsung that they just unveiled a, a whole new piece of at Samsung Unpacked recently where it's like, hey, Samsung is on the Galaxy Note 10 is going to have all this Microsoft software. So I guess a lot of us thought, since they have that partnership in place, maybe they're all set on Android, right? And they don't need to make their own Android device. But the fact that they still think they need to have something in the phone space, but this time are coming at it a little more realistically because basically it's an iOS or Android world. And if mm -hmm. you want to make a phone, your choice is Android. Yeah. That that It just feels like Microsoft being practical, right? Right. And I mean, that's a, that's a big 
kind of hallmark of this current era of Microsoft, That's I would right. say, mm -hmm. uh, is exactly. that practicality and just kind of coming coming down to earth a little bit and practical yeah. and that's working for them practical and, and software as a service that's, that's yeah. all i've ever seen yep. and, it, and it works for them they know they know where their bread is buttered if you will yeah and it just works mm -hmm. for them you know yeah, it does indeed and so then but, you know so oh, sorry. But, the, but the crazy thing right you've got all these people who number one either were windows phone fans who are still holding on to windows phones even though microsoft has said to them you know what we're not doing that anymore they they wanted it to be a Windows device, right? So they were yesterday. They were just like screaming, like it's Android. Are you kidding me? Are you sure? Are you positive? It's Android. <laughs> and then you have the other people who are like, you know, I don't trust Microsoft to make a phone because look what they did with Nokia, right? Mm -hmm. And look what they did with Windows Phone, and now they're they're going to try it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and after after yeah. they had said like, yeah, you know, the phone thing, like that's not working for us. We're getting out, and then they get back right. into it. Like, I, I don't even know who to trust anymore. But yeah, this know, right? this seems like the logical uh, direction for me. So so then what, what are you most excited about, the Surface Neo or the Duo? Is it the Duo because of the portability? And why are they why do they refuse to call it a phone? <laughs> yeah, good question. <laughs> it was funny. Yes. So when Panos even announced it, he's like, you know, you could call it a phone. You could call it a unified communications device. I'm like, guys, it's a phone. You just showed somebody <laughs> answering a phone. <laughs> right. You should call it those things. It's a phone. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I'm I uh, I'm a current Android phone user, so I'm somewhat somewhat interested, but I'm scared of buying anything that Microsoft makes. that's a phone. I have to say. Um, okay. Neo. Uh, Neo, the one that's more like the book, it yeah. looks really cool, but what is it for, right? Yeah. Like I have a laptop and I have a phone. So what is this thing, this like third device, mystery third category going to do for me that my two devices can't do now? Right. Did the Neo not have LTE in it? I thought it had it had LTE. It does. It does okay. have LTE in it. So yep. uh, again, you still have that that market of, of the traveling sales representative or marketing people mm -hmm. that could find some good use out of this, especially when it comes to doing demos and presentations on a much larger right. screen. And it's all on one device. True. That's true. Like, yeah, if you don't make a ton of phone calls or maybe you want to use those surface earbuds for some reason and make a call and use that <laughs> with your, with your little Neo device, maybe that would work out instead of having to carry a laptop and a phone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The surface buds. Yeah. You mentioned those. Uh, did I see that there's office integration with with uh, with the earphones? Is, was that a yep. joke? So explain no, how that how that works. <laughs> of course, there's office integration. I guess is is my punchline. Of course, there is, but uh, how? <laughs> yeah. So uh, what they said at the event is it's uh, the earbuds are going to be integrated with Teams, which makes a lot of sense okay, because you can yeah. use Teams to make calls, sure. right? But also PowerPoint. So. Say you're oh, doing okay. a presentation and you want to advance the um, slide, you could just kind of touch your ear instead of having to mess with the clicker, I guess. And they mm. also showed some uh, integration with transcription, which would uh, that actually I thought was pretty cool. That so makes if you're, sense. you know, doing things in a, one language and you need to translate them on the fly, you can do that via the earbuds. That that I'm like, okay, that's very interesting and sort of makes it worth the two hundred and fifty dollar price, but they're so ugly. They are. They are a little bit large. <laughs> well, well, like the largest earplugs in the world. Was it Miss Higginbotham yesterday that said, you know, maybe that that size is perfect because it you, you don't have any confusion of am I on a phone? Yeah. Or, or it announces to the world that you've got something in your ear. Something's in my yeah, ear. I'm yeah. probably not listening to I'm you right now. You. Well, um, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm busy right now. I'm not listening to you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Uh, and then you have the more kind of the. I would say the more traditional things from the announcement um, mm -hmm. from the event, the Surface Pro 7, the Surface Pro X, anything stand out for uh, for you on those devices? Um, so I'm, I'm very interested in the concept of the Surface Pro X because my needs as a laptop user are something really thin, really portable, really light, and really great battery life. And because it's based on Qualcomm and it's an ARM device, it in theory could have those things for me. But the problem for me is I use my laptop on my lap a lot. And this is in the traditional like pro type design where it has the kickstand, right? So mm -hmm. for me, that's not really great using it on my laptop. It, it falls over a lot. And no, I don't have really short legs. <laughs> but, didn't, but didn't he post a, a photo of it having perfect lapability? 
Pedos. Yeah, he posts those all the time. <laughs> <laughs> We need to yeah. see real world is what you're saying. When I saw that exactly. picture, it looked like yep. it was a lot larger when you see it in the in the photograph. It almost looked like a maybe a 12 inch laptop, if you will. Yeah, this, I think you know. 13, 13 inch screen, right? Mm. Um, 12 inch chassis with 13 inches because of how mm. small the bezels are or something right. like that. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'm interested in that device in theory just because it has all the mobility things that I really want. Uh, I also would love to retry the Surface Laptop 3 because I got to try the first generation Surface Laptop and I didn't really love it. I thought it was okay. But the 3, there are two different models. One's 15-inch screen, one's the 13.5, and um, the 15-inch has an AMD processor. The other one has Intel. So, I, you know, I'm I'm always on the quest for the perfect laptop I and I like it. clamshells more than I like two-in-ones. So, you know, in theory, I, I would like to try that one out and just give it a whirl. Yeah. I'd agree um, with the clamshell over over two and one. I had my time with the uh, the Pixel, Pixel Slate, slate. It? <laughs> and it also had the 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 problem that you're talking about, Mary Jo, where it's just a little too long to be lappable, even though you would consider yeah. it a laptop kind of solution. So, um, so you and Paul Therott, uh talked all about this along with Micah, uh, who was on the show mm -hmm. with you this morning. So, folks who want to get the full take, your full take on, on all these devices and a whole lot more should check out this episode, uh, this week's episode of Windows Weekly. That's twit.tv slash WW uh, to check that out. Mary Jo, anything else you want to leave people with uh, if they can follow your work or anything you're working on right now? Um, anybody who wants to follow my work, uh, go to allaboutmicrosoft.com. And I would say if you're really interested in the operating system that's going to be powering the foldable and dual screen devices, I wrote a very long, uh, like an FAQ style article about what is Windows 10 X. Yes. I would recommend that to everybody. Absolutely. Definitely check it out. There's a lot of detailed information in there uh, on that as expected.